Your long beloved, a word. I was speaking with someone and they were going through it because a lot of things people were saying about them, against them, because like many of us, matter of fact, most of us, we have sinned. We have sinned, but that does not cause us to lose our right to the most high. It does not change who we are. You can take gold and throw it in the mud. You can stomp it down. You can bury it. You can put it in the most vile position you want to. But when it's cleaned off, gold is still gold. When we're looking at Proverbs 29, verse 25, and I'm just really going to talk because it was so pressing on this person that we talked a few times. I was trying to um, minister to them, but in doing so in hearing their relief and understand when we minister to one another, we're actually ministering to ourselves as well because the word of the Lord is sharp and powerful, cutting both ways. It is a two-edged sword. That two-edged sword, the Lord always having his word impregnated. His word is so full of revelation and mercy. So much is inside of it that you find out, and many of you already know, that when we help others, we're actually helping ourselves. As we testify to others, as we encourage one another, we get encouragement. Because each and every day, the enemy is going about trying to destroy us. <clears throat> I wanted to share Proverbs 29, verse 25, before I start. The fear of man bringeth a snare. The fear of man bringeth a snare. The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whosoever putteth his trust in the most high shall be safe. Worrying about what people are going to say, worrying about what people think will make you stumble and many times fall because you cannot please people. And when people realize that you're trying to please them, they will actually put snares in your way. When they realize that you're trying to do right, they will try to point out all your wrongs. Okay. When we were speaking and I was talking to them and they were stating, you know, somebody saw me drinking a beer. I was dancing, even though I was really dancing to the Lord and they put me on video. But people going to think I just had a beer and I'm out there getting high and jamming all around the streets. I'm like, but the Lord knows what's in your heart. Remember, people judge by the outer appearance, but the most high judges by the heart. This particular individual has a very strong place in ministry and they were concerned, but I was like, you're happy. You were happy then. You were celebrating in your spirit, but because people are running around with video and they try to speak evil of you, it caused a great spiritual depression in them. It grieved their spirit. But one of the things, again, I'm going to repeat it before I move forward. The fear of man bringeth a snare. It's a trap. It's a trap. When you worry about what people think, when you're concerned about what are they going to say, all of us go through it. But what you find out, it's an imprisonment when you're caught up in that mentality. One of the things that you start recognizing and Paul talks about it in Hebrews 12, 1. Let us set aside every weight and sin which does so easily beset us. It weighed them down so badly that it took away their joy. And many a time we go through it. That's why I'm sharing this with you. We can be doing a holy work and the enemy come in. The Lord can actually be working on you, giving you a testimony, and that weight 
that sin, what you consider a sin with somebody, oh, I saw this, I saw that. You know, when we look in the book of Ezra, they were rebuilding the temple in the book of Ezra. But when they began to rebuild the temple, and I'm going to liken that temple to Yasharel as we are coming out of our captivity. We are awakening to ourselves. We're drawing closer to the most high. And let me say, be encouraged. When you make a mistake, don't let that mistake testify to you as though it's going to separate you. Remember, nothing can separate us from the love of the most high, not death, not life, not peril, not tribulation, nothing can separate us, okay? They were building the temple. Right now, Yasharel's temple, that spirit of the most high is being built up. And just like in the days when Zerubbabel in the book of Ezra, they were building the temple there were people who came around. I'm going to read um, starting at the fourth chapter. Now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity built the temple unto the Lord Yah of Yasharel, then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, let us build with you, for we seek your God as ye do. And we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Esar Hadan, king of Asher, which brought us up hither. But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, ye have nothing to do with us to build an house unto our God. But we ourselves together, together, mm, 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 will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus, the king of Persia, has commanded us. Then the people of the land weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. Beloved, you have people that want to join you, supposedly, in building that temple, that temple being us, being yourselves, that Holy Spirit dwelling in you but they actually have wicked designs because had the spirit of the most high been dwelling in them, even when they said they did not want them to build with them, had they honored the most high, they would have never troubled them, weakening the hands of the people and troubled them in building. Yasharel right now is, build, is being built back up. The 400 years are over. Yasharel is being built back up. But if you notice, there are a lot of people in the land trying to trouble Yasharel, be it in trying to claim those who are not Jews but are of the Ashkenazis or the Khazarians wanting to suddenly gain all this attention. And because somebody identifies them as being like their others, suddenly they want to make a big stink about it. But the fact of the matter is, the temple of Yasharel with the indwelling of the Most High is being built. And because those others can't be a part of it, they weren't supposed to be a part of it. And I'll tell you why. Some people got this, well, we all together, everybody's the same. They want to bring in those pagan influences. They want to question why the Lord is against this and doesn't support that. And now it's different. Mm -mm. They weren't supposed to be part of that building. You see, as Yasharel is rising up, you got a lot of people now want to get on the bandwagon. And one of the crazy things that you hear when the world is talking, you got to understand when the world is talking, when we look at the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 2, do not be conformed to this world. The world wants to get involved, and as Yasharel grows and as Yasharel gains their own independence, like any other people, with their culture, with their history, with their truth, they want to attach it suddenly 
it they want to call it civil rights and uh, I can't the alphabet and and other people but see none of these other issues were there as Yasharel was being brutalized, as Yasharel was going through. But now that it's getting attention, now that it's standing out, now that you can hit a hammer hitting on that temple when the strength is coming, now all of a sudden LGBTQYX, all of a sudden the other others, we going through the same thing. Oh, no, no, no. Let me go back. Let me go back. Mm. But Zerubbabel and Yeshua and the rest of the chief fathers of Israel said unto them, you had nothing to do with us to build in house unto our God, but we ourselves together, together, we will build unto the most high of Israel. You see, this right here is not an everybody story. Some people could say, oh, you trying to exclude. Well, you were never included because if you were, Considering all the rights and the positions that many of these others have had, and I'm not saying they don't have some type of love for the most high, but some part of, some people want to get on the gravy train. Oh, it looks like it's going to work for them. I'm in that now. No, but you want to water it down. You want to add pagan ideologies. You want to come in and say, well, the Lord didn't mean what he actually said, like that devil speaking in the garden. The Lord won't truly cause you to die. He won't sincerely do it. They weren't supposed to be part of that building, okay? And when they couldn't, mm, we're still in the book of Ezra, chapter four. And the people of the land, weak in the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. As Yasharel is waking up now, let me let me grab your history and tell you how I want it to be told. And as a matter of fact, we're going to erase this and add that. Put smiley faces where murder, torture, and torment were. We want to tell your story for your witcher, and we just going to change a little bit. No, 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 no. You're not part of this building. You're not going to bring in these pagan ideologies and these pagan holidays, which are always ever present in our faces. All you have to do is look at the months of the year to know the paganism of this system that we live in. All you have to do is look at the days of the week to know the paganism that they want to bring in in the name of God because it's for everybody, everybody, but no, 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 not this temple's building. This one is resurrecting something that had been torn down, something that had laid in the dirt for a long, long time. This one is a special project unlike any other. Let me finish. Then the people of the land Weak in the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building. Mm, wait a minute now. And hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose. You see, you got people, they take, now we call it crafty counsel. That's lining up, line upon line, precept upon precept, okay? And hired counselors. You see, you got people sitting in political positions trying to make their voices heard, walking in, in that position of that demonic serpent. You know, the serpent, the tongue go that way and the other part go that way. That devil, if you will, and hired counselors against them to frustrate, frustrate their purposes. Mm, mm. You know, when you look at what's going on right now, even though you got people that want to change what's taught and how education goes, you also got to take another perspective. The whole system is crumbling because it's corrupt. The money is not filtered for students. It's not filtered for teachers. You got corruption going on where the big guys sitting in the offices who don't give a slight about the children or what they learn or don't know or what they have access to. They want to make these decisions, you see. Yes, yes, let me go on. I digress. And hire counselors. Mm, mm, mm. Doesn't that sound like took 
crafty counsel. They hire counselors against them to frustrate their purposes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Now, we're going to go over into the book of Nehemiah. We're going to go over into the book of Nehemiah so we can talk about it. Okay. In Ezra, they're building the temple. In Nehemiah, they're building the wall. You see, you need a wall against this worldly paganistic stuff that say everything is okay. Let me finish. Romans chapter 12, verse two. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. That wall, it's building walls to keep out those things that don't belong in there, those pollutant, those corruptions, okay? Now, when we get to the book of Nehemiah, mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I always thought this part was very interesting. We're in the book of Nehemiah, chapter six, verse two. Then Sambalot and Geshem sent unto me saying, come, let us meet together in some, in some one of the villages in the plain of Ono. You see, Sambalot and the rest of them, they, they had a plan. They wanted to thwart the building of the wall, you know, to keep things protected. And they wanted them to meet in one of the villages called Oh, no. You see, just the fact that it was a, oh, no. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Ain't nobody going for that. Ain't nobody going to you. Oh, no. They got counselors. They take crafty counsel to keep this temple, the temple representing where the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is, where the people, even when you're falling, you get built back up. You're working together. Does it mean you don't have fault? No, it doesn't. Does it mean you don't make mistakes? No, it doesn't. Does it mean there are no evil ones among Yasharel? No, it doesn't. But this building has to be done by Yasharel together, together. But you got these other ones that want to come in. They say they want to help you. You, you. you need help so everybody, everybody can feel good. But you see, if we go along with these pollutants, what you find out is Yasharel can't exist because their concern is not for the Most High. Their concern is not for the truth. Their concern is not for Yasharel. Their concern is to do some crafty, devious thing to stop the work, mostly the work of the Most High, to keep the people from coming together because they remember the history. They know the history. They know the history. So wait a minute. If we let them build, the king isn't going to get his custom. These people will start thinking for themselves again. Wait a minute now. Then Sabalot and Geshem sent unto me, this is Nehemiah talk. Let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of, oh no. But they thought to do me mischief. You see, when they talk about let's negotiate, the intent is already crooked. The intent and the spirit reveals these things, beloved. Just like when I was speaking to the man who, okay, you had the beer in your hand, you dancing around. It wasn't like you laying on the ground, you know, you were selling drugs, but this guy taped you. And although initially he's standing there talking about the spirit of the word with you, his goal was to do you mischief. Yes, yes, because it grieved his soul. It, it, it caused his soul to be stricken, his spirit. Okay, to be vexed when the guy said, I posted you online, now everybody going to see. What is there to see? I'm, uh, uh, as I'm testifying and ministering, I'm explaining, just like with Ezra, just like in the book of Nehemiah, okay, they are taking, they got counsel, they, they plotting this thing out. Okay, wait a minute now and sent messengers, and I sent messengers. See, they they thought to do mischief, and he's telling them, I sent messengers unto them saying, I'm doing a great work. I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time for that. 
That's the way you got to be. Ain't nobody got time for that. I'm doing the great work. The great work that's going on right now, it can be keeping your spirit lined up, keeping your intercessory prayer, praying that the most high intercede and keep your spirit built up so that we can keep one another built up. It's a great work. Why? Because we are honoring him. And when you fall, because you will, that's all right. You're not alone. If you look around, a whole lot of us down there, which I'm getting up. What about you? Wait a minute now. We already know. Let us set aside every week. I saw you fall. Okay, but watch me when I rise. Wait a minute now. And the sin, which does so easily beset us. Watch me when I rise. You got to, you got to put on that whole armor because of what's out here, beloved. And you got people, they take counselors, they get together. They were doing it. You can read it in the book of Ezra. You can go back and we can get all up in it and near mine. Okay. And the Lord was sending prophets. He's like, uh-uh, be encouraged. Wait a minute now. Be encouraged because I know what's going on. And the Lord was making the work prosper. See, that's a sign that he's with us and he's among us. He's making the work prosper. It doesn't matter that I scattered you. It doesn't matter that your temple has been torn down. I'm the one that made the rocks. Come on, let's build that thing up. You come into the potter's house. You understand? Listen. Don't ever let everybody get in there with you. Talking about we're going to help you build it up. Bring in the Lord. Bring in that master carpenter. Who that? Who that? That's the word of the Lord. That's Yeshua. How much shit? Bring, go get the master carpenter. Don't be trusting everybody. Let me finish. Okay, let me finish. Mm -hmm. And I sent messengers under them saying, I'm doing a great work so that I cannot come down. You see, bringing you down. Mm, mm, mm. I love this. I love this. We are in the book of Nehemiah, chapter six. Why should the work cease while I leave it and come down to you? Understand, the Lord is doing a great and a mighty work, bringing us out of this darkness. There is nothing on this earth. I don't care what the enemy do. You can try to make a law. That's the law, man. We know how corrupt they are, okay, to stop us. You can't stop this thing. It's the Lord's doing. Let me finish. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort. Mm -hmm. They just sending folk trying to mess it up, trying to mess up the building of the wall. Those walls are necessary. They're necessary to keep out the, the animals and, and those who don't belong, to give the people that assurance that the Lord is surrounding you. He's built you up in the temples there. Wait a minute now. Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, I want to go, and Lord, let me find it because I'm about to finish. Oh, let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Let me find it. Um, I'm just going to have to, okay. They working on the wall. They working on the wall. They working, they working, they working. These people were so intent to stop the work that the men had to be building, had one hand doing building and then the other hand had a weapon. Now, wait a minute. The word of the Lord is in your one hand. That word building you up, keeping you strong, letting you know I am with you. Turn to me and I will return unto you, okay, and build you up. And I don't care how many people take crafty counsel. I don't care how many people come in. I don't care how many people got a video of you. Oh, it's not going to stop this great work. It's the Lord's doing, beloved. Understand once again, and I got to go back to it because I did not put it on uh, the screen because I wanted the spirit to move me as I remembered and I wanted to share it because spirit let me know about it. That's not just one person. That's a whole lot of folk going through that. Mm -hmm. The fear of man bringeth a snare. It's a snare. It's a trap. Don't 
fear these people. But whosoever putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. Do you understand? Do you understand? And here we go. Mm -hmm. And the peace, this is from the book of Philippians. And the peace of Yah which passeth all understanding. You ever be in the midst of something? I mean, you can't find the doorknob to get yourself out of it. But when you ask the Lord to help you, whoo, whoo, wait a minute now. And the peace of Yah, it passeth understanding. It's like, wait a minute, a minute ago, I didn't even think I could lift my head up. And suddenly the peace of Yah, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and mind through Jesus Christ. Why does it say through Yahshua HaMashiach? Because that word, that word will keep you when you slip and when you fall, it will catch you and lift you back up on your feet, beloved. It's dangerous to worry about what other people think. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Woo. Listen, listen. Do not be conformed to this world, mm -hmm. but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. You see, you know, even in the book of Psalms, it's backing up what Ezra Ezra saying, is backing up what Nehemiah is saying. The wicked plotteth against the just and gnasheth upon him with his teeth. You, the things they'll say, the thing that they're saying, it, it just bites you, chew you all up. But remember, wait a minute, wait a minute. But the peace of Yah, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and your minds in perfect peace, in perfect peace, because he's doing a great work. That wall is coming around you, beloved. It's not letting in those pollutants of the world. It doesn't matter how many counselors they have. It doesn't matter how many of them yip, 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 and yap, yap, yap. And you're carrying your weapon. What's that? That's your Bible. That's your sword. That's the word of the Most High. I had to share this while the Lord and the Spirit is on my heart. And just as the Most High is blessing, then he's blessing now. Father, we ask in the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach that you come down amongst your people. In the midst of our sins, cleanse us with your word. Forgive us. Open our eyes to the truth. Give us the peace that passeth all understanding so that we find our way in this lost system. And we want to thank you, Father. We know that we live in a society that is experiencing Spiritual famine, spiritual famine, Lord, but fill us up with your word. Guide us, keep us, build us up in our temples with your Holy Spirit. Let the wall of your protection be about us. You are Yahuwah of Sabor. Thank you, Father, as we give you praise, honor, and glory this day and forevermore. For we know you can do above and beyond anything we could ever hope or imagine. And no, Father, we do not doubt. We are not trying to figure out how, but we know who. And we give you praise, honor, and thanksgiving for being and for having mercy upon us and our sins as you bring us into your marvelous light, raising us out of our graves, building us back up a house of Yasharel to do thy will. And those among us that you will take away, we ask for the mercy of the Most High upon them, that when you get them on the other side, you cleanse them, for we have been polluted in this system. Cleanse us, Father, for we are yours and yours alone. In the mighty name of Yeshua HaMashiach, we ask, praise, and thank you for these things. Amen. Shalom. A word.